Erythropoiesis, which basically means erythro means red. Poiesis is the production of, we, this is how we make red blood cells. Make R, B, Cs. All right, this is how it works. In your bone marrow, so let's draw up a bone. In your bone marrow, so we know that it's your bone marrow. You go, remember we said when we did a skeletal system, there's a red bone marrow, yellow bone marrow. Yellow bone marrow is fat. You don't make red blood cells in the fatty bone marrow. You make it in the red bone marrow. Now, when you are an infant, the red bone marrow is in the diaphysis, right? The long portion of the bone. As an adult, it's actually in the ends of these long bones and in the flat bones of the hip, of the sternum, of the skull. This is mainly where erythropoiesis occurs. But for simplicity's sake, I'm just gonna draw it in the diaphysis here, which would happen with children. Okay, let's have a look. First thing is, in our bone marrow, we have stem cells, right? So let's draw up a stem cell. Now, what a stem cell is, is a cell that can basically turn into any other cell of the body. Now, the stem cells in our bone marrow can't turn into skin cells or retinal cells or liver cells. They can only turn into a range of blood cells. So they're not just called generic stem cells, they're called hematopoietic stem cells. So, hematopoietic, basically meaning blood cell production stem cells. So these stem cells can turn into any lineage of cells. So for example, of blood cells. So if this cell wanted to, it could turn into a white blood cell. It could turn into a platelet, for example. But in this scenario, it's turning into a red blood cell, because we're doing erythropoiesis. Next week, we'll look at how it turns into a white blood cell, and the platelet, I'll talk about in a sec. All right, so this hematopoietic stem cell turns into another cell type, right? And this cell type is called a proerythroblast. Pro? Erythroblast. And that proerythroblast turns into something called an early erythrocyte and early erythrocyte, which then turns into a late erythrocyte. a late erythrocyte. Which then turns into a normocyte, which is a nice name. Normocyte. And this normocyte will jump out into the bloodstream and turn into something called a reticulocyte. All right, let's just recap and then I'll tell you what you need to know, all right? So, the stem cells that can produce all the different types of blood cells can turn into white blood cells, so leukocytes, platelets, and erythrocytes, red blood cells. Focusing just down the red blood cell lineage, the stem cell turns into something called a proerythroblast, then turns into an early erythrocyte, then a late erythrocyte, then a normocyte. Ultimately, what I need you to know is that hematopoietic stem cells will ultimately turn into something called a reticulocyte. That's the main thing. I don't need you to remember those ones. I'm just telling you the pathway, right? Now, the reticulocyte, will be produced here in the bone marrow, but jumps into the bloodstream, right? Now the thing with the reticulocyte is it has no nucleus. No 
no nucleus. Here's the thing. But this is the reason why I'm telling you this process. Throughout this process to produce the reticulocyte, what's hap happening here is that they're pulling in all these nutrients and required factors to create what's needed in the reticulocyte, which is hemoglobin. So red blood cells need hemoglobin. So I'll draw it over here. If I've got a reticulocyte here, In order to produce this reticulocyte through this process, we need a couple of things. We need folate. We need iron. So the iron ion, right? That's the iron ion. I know it sounds a bit difficult. Vitamin B12 and amino acids. So my point here is throughout this process, it's pulling all these things in, folate, B12, iron, amino acids, and by the time it's a reticulocyte, it's taken all these things and it's filled the reticulocyte with hemoglobin, all right? Hemoglobin. So you've got all these, so I'm just going to draw it like this, all these millions of hemoglobin molecules inside, and then I'm going to tell you what hemoglobin actually is. So if I were to take... this hemoglobin out. So there's no nucleus, that's important. That nucleus has disappeared by the time it's a reticulocyte, all right? We needed it to make the hemoglobin, but now once we've made it, it's gone. So the hemoglobin is made up of two things, heme and globin. All right, let's draw it up. Globin is amino acids. Globin is amino acids. Heme is made up of two components. Heme itself and iron. All right? And this is what it looks like. One hemoglobin has one hemoglobin has four globins and they're just amino acid chains, all right? So these are the globins. So four globins. Inside each globin, you have a heme molecule. Heme, 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 heme. So you have four heme molecules. Inside each heme molecule, you've got an iron ion. Iron, iron. Iron, iron. So you have four iron molecules. And each of those four iron molecules will carry oxygen. So that means there's four positions per hemoglobin and there's millions of hemoglobin in a red blood cell, which means, let's just say there's one million hemoglobin in a red blood cell, it can carry four million oxygen because this is where the oxygen will bind into this pocket here. Hopefully that makes sense to everybody, right? So this is just one hemoglobin molecule, this whole thing here, one hemoglobin, all right? Any questions, let me know. So let's wipe this out. This reticular site, which is now filled with hemoglobin, Changes, it, changes its shape and turns into a red blood cell. So, when it changes its shape, it starts to look like a donut a little bit, without the hole in the middle. But basically, if you were to look at a bird's eye view of this red blood cell, it'll look like that, right? But if you look at it on the side, so you'd flip it and look at it laterally, it looks like that. All right? And the reason why it looks like this is so it can deform its shape. Red blood cells move through blood vessels, right? They can be really big arteries or really small capillaries. What you may or may not know is that some capillaries are only one red blood cell wide. There's some, most capillaries in actual fact, 
can only let one red blood cell through at a time in a row, like a conga line of red blood cells, which means that if they were big and fat and round, which they can in some disorders or diseases, they can't move through. Some areas are so small that the red blood cell needs to fold, right? And so that's why it has that particular shape. Now there's a genetic disorder called sickle cell anemia in which the red blood cell is shaped more like a sickle. So instead of being shaped like that, it's shaped basically like this. And it can't get through. One, doesn't carry oxygen well. Two, it gets trapped and forms clots, right? So sickle cell anemia, that's what that is. All right, so another important point. So reticulocyte turns to that within around about three days of entering the bloodstream. And the red blood cell now, which we have here, or the erythrocyte, is simply there to carry oxygen. That's its job. Actually carries oxygen and carbon dioxide, but mainly it's carrying oxygen. Now, a red blood cell, I told you, has no nucleus. One of the only cells of the body with no nucleus. Can somebody answer this for me? If it has no nucleus, it means it also has no what? If it has no nucleus, it has no DNA, cannot regenerate. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Exactly. Red blood cells have no D DNA. When cells get damaged or get too old, they go to their DNA and they make new copies of themselves or they make new proteins to regenerate. So if the cell wall gets damaged or the mitochondria gets damaged, it's okay, it goes to the cell, it goes to the nucleus, goes to the DNA, makes new uh, proteins, structural regulatory proteins and regenerates. Red blood cells cannot. So they have a finite lifetime and that finite lifetime is 120 days. After 120 days, red blood cells are no longer good enough to keep. And so it means that their edges become a bit rough, they can't fold as well, they become very stiff, and that can be dangerous. Like sickle cell anemia, if a red blood cell and its walls are too damaged, it can't fit through the blood vessel, can form clots. If it forms clots, it can form a stroke or it can form a whole bunch of other issues, right? So we need to get rid of the red blood cell. And because a red blood cell is basically hemoglobin, what do we do? So basically, this is what we do. We take the hemoglobin We take the hemoglobin and we do this. The globin is just amino acids, right? We can recycle those amino acids. So what we do with those amino acids is we can reuse them in producing more hemoglobin, right? The heme, like I said to you before, iron, and heme. Now the iron, we recycle as well. Because remember I said to you before, to ma continually make hemoglobin and red blood cells, we need amino acids and iron, right? And then it pulls the B12 and folate from our diet, right? Perfect. Okay, the heme, what happens to the heme? So, the heme will travel to the liver. The heme will travel to the liver and what it will do in the liver is it turns heme into something called bilirubin. Now this is quite a complex pathway, but bilirubin will end up turning into bile, which we use to digest things. And bile jumps into our small intestines. And it can either be pooed out or it can jump back, it can be reabsorbed and end up being peed out. All right? So the heme goes to the liver, turns to something called bilirubin, which goes into our bile. That's why our bile has that greeny color to it. And then it gets pooed out or peed out. And it's actually the heme, or the bilirubin, that makes our poo brown and our pee yellow. Right? That's what the bilirubin does. Another important point. If somebody has cirrhosis or liver damage, let's say hepatitis. Has anyone heard of hepatitis before? So hepatitis 
Hepa means liver. Itis means inflammation of. So hepatitis is inflammation of the liver. This can happen due to a number of different, so you can have hepatitis that's viral, viral hepatitis, or you can have inflammation of the liver due to cirrhosis, for example. Anyway, if the liver's damaged, it can't do this process where it takes the heme, turns it to bilirubin, turns, throws it to the bile, and it can be part of the digestive system or the urinary system. What happens is that bilirubin doesn't do this, has to go through an alternate pathway and just gets thrown back into the blood. And the blood redirects it to our skin, our periphery. And our skin becomes yellow, and this is jaundice. Has everyone heard of jaundice before? Where somebody has yellowing of the skin, yellowing of the sclera of the eyes. This is due to hepatitis or liver damage. And it's because of the bilirubin isn't being processed properly. This is the take home message. Stem cells, hematopoietic stem cells, turn into reticulocytes, which then jump into the bloodstream. A reticulocyte is filled with hemoglobin. To create hemoglobin, you need iron, folate, B12, amino acids. The reticulocyte turns into a red blood cell after about three days in the bloodstream, and that red blood cell only lasts 120 days. It can't regenerate because it has no nucleus. The red blood cell, oh, I didn't say this part. I didn't say where this happens. Where does this hemoglobin recycling happen? It happens in the spleen. These are the main places, spleen and liver, right? So hemoglobin, this process where it takes the amino acids, throws it away to, re well, throws it to be recycled, takes the iron, throws it to be recycled, takes the heme and chucks it to the liver. This is happening either at the spleen or the liver. The only thing you probably ever need to know about the spleen is that it undergoes this process of recycling hemoglobin or dead red blood cells. The heme at the liver turns to bilirubin, turns to bile, comes out in their poo, comes out in their pee, that's the coloration of it. So uh, another thing is if somebody has liver damage, their poo's no longer brown, it's white, okay? So again, because of the bilirubin. If the liver's damaged, it can result in jaundice because it's been redirected to the skin. All right, next thing. Sometimes we can stimulate this process to occur and we do this in times of hypoxia. So hypoxia is when we have low oxygen. Now our body must have oxygen at all times. So we need to make more red blood cells. That's the thing. So the body always tries to fix up homeostatic imbalances. It goes, oh, I'm not getting enough oxygen. What's one way that I can get enough oxygen? I know if I make more red blood cells, I'll have to carry more oxygen. So in times of hypoxia, when oxygen levels are low, the kidneys, the kidneys release a hormone called erythro, so that makes sense, poetin. Basically, it just says it stimulates red blood, also known as EPO. EPO. Has anyone ever heard of EPO when people are taking performance enhancing drugs? EPO is a common performance enhancing drug. It's the one that I'm quite sure that Lance Armstrong admitted to taking because what it does is it produces red blood cells. So what EPO does is it stimulates this process. That's all it does, right? EPO stimulates erythropoiesis, makes more red blood cells, more red blood cells, more oxygen, more oxygen, more energy, more energy, maybe mean the difference between winning or losing the Tour de France.